Smith & Wesson Model 29. Pretty rare cat, Dirty Harry revolver. And I'll bet you you're asking yourself the question by now. Did it fire five shots or six before it broke? Let's get this thing fixed and maybe we can get that question answered. There's one additional piece that fell out of this gun when we took it apart. This stud right here is originally supposed to be part of this stud that goes through the frame. And I'm going to draw that here for you in a second. That snapped off. It brittle fractured right there because it was not being supported by the side plate. The end of this hole kind of got wallowed. The end of this pin got wallowed out a little bit where it goes into the side plate. The trigger is supposed to sit down over that pin in that position right there. And then if we fly the side plate in, we'll take a look and we'll see that. Hang on a minute, let me get this out of here. This pin is supposed to go, let me get it up here, in that hole right there. And then you have a boss here, and you have a boss here that the trigger rides on so that it's not dragging on everything else. Well, and I don't know how easy this is gonna be to show, but this side plate had been loose enough, long enough, that that hole actually wallowed itself in the plate. It wasn't being supported by the side plate anymore. And the back and forth motion of this wrung the pin off. So we're gonna have to figure out how this is attached to the side of the gun and what we're gonna do about this and how we're gonna make another one of these bad boys and get this gun running again without messing it up too bad. To the best of my knowledge, here's the side wall of the frame. We're looking down from above at the side wall of the frame here. Let me pull this up a little bit. All right, and we need a pin. The pin sticks up like this, and then the trigger is going to ride in this position right here, and it's going to ride that way. So if I'm, if I'm right, this pin actually kind of looks like this. and then it's got a stud sticking out there. And the excess material, let me move that out of the way now. And the excess material was kind of rounded out like this and peened out and then ground over. And that was ground over down flat and then the whole thing is polished. So if we look at the other side of the frame here, well, let me show you the inside here for one more second. There's two things going on here. There's two things that are attached here. You have this stud. Remember that this is in the back of the trigger pin. So when we flip this bad boy over, there's two things attached here. Let me get it where you can see it. This was the piece in the rear punch. This piece is actually added to keep the cylinder from coming out the back. And then right up somewhere around this mistake right here, this gun's got a little bit of damage on it. But right up in here is where that other pin's going to pop out. So we're going to drill a hole through the center of this, make a tool. I'm thinking we make a tool that kind of looks, we'll drill a hole down the center of it and make a tool that looks like this in a step. And then flip this over and run this tool in this way and knock this piece out. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen and it should leave us with a clean hole on the outside. We'll make another one of these up, we'll measure it out, we'll do everything we got to do and then pop this in and just very, very lightly peen it all the way around so that when we very lightly file this thing down, a small area of polish will be able to save the rest of the finish on the gun. That, at least, is the operational theory. Just center pop that. Take a center drill. Walk in on that. Now I have it centered. I don't want the hole to be quite that big. I'm just gonna run with that and we'll put it up in a vise once I know I got it. Yeah, pretty much right in the center. He 
eventually we'll pop through this and this will pop clear so we'll keep walking this hole out and out i'm about at the size i want to be right now and we'll get the rest of it cleared out of here and then get on about making another stud for it so this leads me to another problem we've discovered this stud is actually a bit of a wobble fit in there so we're going to make a stud that's slightly larger than this one so that it'll tighten up on the hammer pin and custom go i've got the frame drilled out now and i've drilled a hole straight through the middle of it we're going to custom make one of these studs here as soon as we define the numbers let me change batteries in this lob i'll be right back so we're back over here and we've we finished popping out the remaining piece out uh, from the inside of the boss here you can see where it's all silver where it was and we have a small amount of blowback here wait a minute here let me get a little let me hang on a minute okay hold on oh that's the wrong one where's the focus back here you already got it in auto put it in auto that'll be fine all right it looks worse than it is but we got it to pop out and we got it to pop out. So now we got to look at the engineering now for the new stud that's going to fit down in there. We've got some options. We can thread it in. We can put it in um, with a force fit. Either way, we're going to have to do a little bit of refinishing on the other side of this. I've heard stories about people partially drilling these and making a pin that would fit kind of like on a Nagant revolver. I really didn't want to do that. I would like to have the ability to cycle the action with the side plate off. So I've chosen to go all the way through and drill that hole through. And whatever we do, when we bring the pin back out, then we'll have to planish this back over, turn it back into a rivet, and then uh, very, very gently file it down, polish it smooth, and then we're going to rust blue, catch it back up to the rest of the, uh, of the action. So let's look at the engineering, shall we? This pin, we're back to my mics again here, but it doesn't matter. This pin measures about 100 thousandths in diameter on my mics. Now, once again, it doesn't matter that we're using my level of precision here because as long as we use the same mics to mic it, draw it, and make it, and then we're going to hand fit the thing, it doesn't matter if I'm a thou or two off. So this is nominally 100 thousandths of an inch um, right here. This is 100 thousandths of an inch right there nominally the diameter from there to there so when we cut it we're actually going to probably make it about 0 0.110 um, just because I want to have a little bit more room um, again an English gun so I'm working in English units everything inside this gun is English sorry uh, European guys um, there's this misconception that I think I have a problem with the metric system but if you don't use the units that the gun was engineered in it becomes very difficult after a while this hole that we drilled through it is also, it's uh, 0.125. We've got an eighth of an inch hole through here. So we're gonna wind up making a part. We're gonna wind up making a part that looks like this. Part's gonna look like that. And then we've got on the outside of it out here, this is 125. We're gonna put a slight collar on it like that and bring it back on around again. I'm trying to draw on a towel. We did that during a conservation episode. So this right here, we're gonna make 0 0.150. And this right here, this the, the, um, the uh, diameter of this is gonna be 0 0.110. And that's gonna be our piece. Now, how long is it from here to here? Ah, I'm gonna measure how deep the action is. But I got news for you. We're just going to make it really, really long and say, okay, it's probably got to be at least 275. So we'll make it about 400 long. We'll make this 400 thou long. And we'll trim it down until the side plate lands on this thing and stays put. We'll, um, we'll start milking it down until the side plate was allowed to go all the way home and touch down. And then when the side plate touches down, bang, then we'll know that we've got the pin long enough that when it gets up into this recess up inside the um, uh, up inside this side plate, that it, it's got a good hold on it. It won't be free to rattle around, which is what causes it to break in the first place. I'm making an engineering change on the fly here. Here's our receiver wall again. I'm going to thread this hole. I'm going to thread it 840 and then have the stud the existing boss was still here 
So rather than mess with the boss's distance out here and mess with the side to side slop on a trigger, the trigger runs in this, in this groove right here. So instead of messing with this distance, I'm making a stud that's gonna go up into that hole and down like that. So the part that I'm making actually kind of looks like this. I'm taking an 840 existing screw stud and then turning it down until this part here is the 0.105 in diameter. And then I'm leaving this end of it stick out that side and I'm leaving this end of it stick out that side until I can fit it, um, uh, until I can fit it in there and make it all fit. So we're gonna make a change here in the engineering and we're actually gonna make a piece that looks like this. test fitting this because this gun had a lot of strokes on it and that hole was while it opened about maybe five or six thousandths of an inch so even though the pin mic at a hundred I'm going to about a hundred and five to try to take the walk out of it yes it does turn this model 29 into a one-of-a-kind gun but as I'm going to show you in a couple of seconds where that trigger is sets where the single action sear meets so what we're doing with this pin is an integral part of the safety of the 44 Magnum while it's in full cock. We'll get to that, but in the meantime, I'm gonna finish fitting this. All right, I'm finishing very, very gently, tapping this hole out. And the whole time we've been opening up this hole, we've had to become very, very careful to maintain the spatial distance between the center line of this hole and the center line of this hammer stud. And Bruno's got a very special gun in here that we're going to use to demonstrate this with. So let's cut over to the uptight. I want to show you something. So this is the Smith & Wesson triple lock that um, Bruno's been working on here. To pop the side plate off of that so that I can demonstrate something. Bruno's been doing the animation on this triple lock and he's been in and out of this. And he had a couple of questions he wanted to ask me and him walking in the door with this triple lock when I know what episode we got to do. We got to fix that Model 29. So very serendipitous overlap. Here's the stud that we're replacing in the Model 29. The stud, and I did not finish drilling that hole on purpose, that stud's sticking up right there. You can see the two of them. These are both end frame Smiths with about, I don't know, 40 to 50 years difference in manufacturing in between them. The distance from the hole that we're drilling to the center line of this stud must be the same. And the reason is this. When you single action cock this particular gun, the single action cocking surface is right there. So there's a triangle that's formed by this pin, this pin, and that locking surface. And that triangle must be identical. If you move this pin in any different direction, that angle changes, the trigger pull on this thing changes, and you have fundamentally altered the characteristics of the weapon. This is why I'm, Smith & Wesson won't even sell, sell these studs to gunsmiths. You've got to send it back to Smith & Wesson and do it, and I'm sure guys have fixed it, and know that this particular Model 21, 29, I'm sorry, happens to be my personal revolver and that gun broke a long time ago and I'm just now getting to a point where I feel like I've got what it takes to be able to replace that. So just know that if you're in here messing around inside of this action that you are playing with the big boys and just know what you're doing or don't do it, please. All right, I used an 840 thread pitch and you can see it's walking around a little bit because my intention then is to fill the rest of those threads up with a, with, a, uh, with a red Loctite and lock that down into position. The rest of this, it's just gonna be a matter of hand fitting all of this. We'll check it here, but we're gonna set that over its trigger stud there. And bang, we're back to where we need to be. 
Oh yeah, that brings me to something. You guys see that little nick of metal right there? That little nick of metal right there is what happens when you try to pry one of these side plates off and you don't know that this little tit sticking out here to keep you from doing that. That's why you smack the side of the frame with the hammer. So once I've fitted the screw, trimmed it to length and fitted it, then I can... All I'm doing here now is moving the metal around until I've got this curvature line. And you can see now where the frame line is starting to come right across the center of it. So let me reposition this here because it's rolling a little bit. And all I'm doing now is playing with where the light is and getting this in the right spot. I know it's moving, but I'm trying not to tack it down too hard. But I've got the top of it formed, and this has to be formed this way because the cylinder has to go by when it shuts. So now that I've got that in there, and you can see where the polished hammer face, there's absolutely no dings or no marks. The, the mirrored polished hammer face is allowing me to just take the end of that screw, planish it right up into the hole, and then what we've got then is a replaced trigger stud. Let's put this bad boy back together again. Hey, at this point here, you'll notice that I'm doing a hammer push-off test. You've got to push forward on a hammer and put a lot more weight on it. And if it does not pass a push-off test, do not put live ammo in it. And it's extremely important that when you're doing the safety checks on this gun is that when you shove on a hammer, you're putting about 30 pounds of load on it, and you want to make sure that it does not drop no matter what. It's raining. I'm going to rust blue the gun anyway. And I really didn't want to hold up on the test firing. Because sometimes you just got to know. Get all mud off my glasses here. All right, it's raining like a cow wasn't on a flat rock. You guys have heard the rain hitting the roof of the building. You've heard it thundering. You've heard things banging around. Sorry about the audio in this. It is what it is. Smith & Wesson Model 29 trigger stud. I'm going to tell you what, man. This thing is an absolute cannon. But now we know.